viewers, this is 300 plus academy where all we do is exams tutoring, ensuring that you ace your nest and every uh, exam. I'm still on the business of NECO 2024, talking about chemistry practical this time around. Uh, the first thing we'll be looking at is salt analysis. Uh, for this year's salt analysis, we have a certain uh, salt C. We have a certain salt C. And salt C uh, uh, for this year is uh, actually zinc uh, chloride. So in what form are we going to uh, be having uh, the questions talking about uh, zinc uh, chloride? As you can see on your screen, uh, we're going to carry out uh, the following exercises on sample C. Record your observation, identify any gases involved, and state the conclusions you draw uh, from the result of each uh, test. We're told to put all of C in the test tube and add about 10 cm cube of water. Uh, as you can see on your screen, we're told to put all of C in a test tube and add about 10 cm cube of water. At the moment we add water to uh, sample C, C is going to dissolve uh, to give a colorless solution. And uh, in that case, we are going to infer that that is a soluble salt. Uh, moving on to question B, it says to a portion of solution in A, add sodium hydroxide in drops and then in excess. So to this uh, solution from A, we will be told to add sodium hydroxide in drops and then in excess. So what we're going to add is going to be a white precipitate, as you can see uh, in the diagram on your screen, a white precipitate which will dissolve in excess uh, sodium hydroxide. In that case, once you have a white precipitate that dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide, uh, you talk about uh, zinc 2 ion, lead 2 ion, and aluminum 3 ion being present or suspected. Now, if you look at question uh, C, as you can see on your screen, it says to a second portion, add aqueous ammonia in drops until it is in excess. So, to a second portion, talking about the solution from A, when we had aqueous ammonia in drops and in excess, we're going to have a white precipitate. Now that precipitate is going to dissolve in excess uh, ammonia. In that case, zinc 2 ion is going to be confirmed. If it were to be uh, lead and aluminum, they are going to be insoluble in excess ammonia. But in a case where we have a white precipitate and the precipitate is soluble in excess ammonia, then we confirm as zinc that ends question c so that confirms the cation test talking about uh zinc two ion uh, let's look at the anion test uh as you can see on your screen question d says to a third portion add trizonitrate uh, five dilute hno3 followed by silver nitrate at each time that we use silver nitrate we are always trying to uh look for the presence of chloride ion so Solution C plus dilute HNO3 plus silver nitrate. What we have is a um, white precipitate. Now, the precipitate is going to be insoluble in the acid, insoluble in dilute HNO3. In that case, chloride ion is suspected or present. So, uh, if you look at question E, it says um, divide D into two portions. That's the precipitate we have at D. We should divide it into two uh, portion to the first portion we were told to expose to sunlight now when we expose the uh, precipitate we have at uh, question d to sunlight the precipitate which was white is going to turn grayish black that confirms the presence of chlorine that's one way of confirming the uh, chlorine it could be this and as well it could be this or to uh, the precipitate we have for uh Question D, that solution C plus dilute HNO3 plus silver nitrate. Now, after having the white precipitate, which is insoluble in dilute HNO3, if we were told to add aqueous ammonia now, then what we're going to have is that the precipitate will dissolve uh, in the uh, aqueous ammonia to form a colorless solution. If that be the case, then uh, chloride ion is uh, confirmed. And that's just... Uh, how we can have the question talking about uh, salt analysis for a uh, sample uh, C. 
Also, we will be having uh, another sample uh, talking about sample D uh, in this year's exam. So, uh, the first sample we just concluded was sample C. So, we are having sample D. Sample D uh, for this year's exam is going to be powdered uh, uh, milk. Now, um, talking about powdered milk, you cannot say that uh, sample D powdered milk is an organic compound. No. As a matter of fact, it is a misnomer to say yeah, milk is a compound because milk is not a compound. Milk is a mixture. Look at what I wrote on the board. I said milk is not a single compound. It is a complex mixture of various compounds. What are the compounds that milk contains? It contains water. It contains carbohydrates. Now, in talking about carbohydrates, that's lactose. Uh, the lactose is a disaccharide which is made up of glucose and uh, galatose. We have fats inside milk. We have protein, which I suspect that is what uh, we are going to have our question centered around. Then we have vitamins. So the thing about milk is this. You cannot say it is an organic compound. You cannot even call it a compound. It is a misnomer to call milk a compound. So the thing about this about a milk is that when you shake a milk for a while, you get the fat out. You separate out the fat. So shake milk for a while. We get fat separating out. So that what we are going to be left with, first, you know, the water must have been evaporated so that the water is gone. You're left with carbohydrate, fat, protein, and vitamins. Uh, so that by the time you shake for a while, you get the fat out. You see, when you shake for a while, we get the fat separating out. So when we say powdered milk, what powdered milk contains simply are uh, protein. That's what we call whey protein. And then the carbohydrate, lactose. That's what is left. And that is why when you look at sample, the bean powdered milk, these are what we have there. So based on uh, the reagents uh, we've been directed to make available, uh, what I suspect we'll be testing for is for the presence of uh, protein. So how do we expect to uh, see the question? As you can see on your screen, uh, the, it says, Add about 5 cm cube of distilled water to D. So when we add water to the milk and shake vigorously, D plus H2O is going to dissolve to give a milky solution. In that case, we say D is uh, soluble. Okay, look at the next question. It says add about 5 cm cube of soda lime solution uh, to uh, solution D and boil. So solution D plus soda lime solution and then we boil so when we do this look at us we're going to have a colorless gas with a with a irritating smell which turns moist red litmus uh blue telling you that okay the gas there is uh alkaline and forms dense white films of ammonium chloride nh4cl with hcl stopper this is looking like ammonia but you see, this ammonia in this case is from an amide group, or you say it's from a, an amino uh, group. That just answers question B. You see, D plus soda lime solution, and then we boil a colorless gas with irritating smell, which turns moist red litmus blue. And then this is confirmatory test to show that ammonia gas is the gas evolved here. And that's going to, our inference is going to be ammonia from an amide group, or you say amino group. Now, if you look at uh, question C, there it says, to a portion of solution D in a boiling tube, add some drops of uh, sodium hydroxide followed by 1% copper sulfate, then boil. Now, when you look at this, just like I said there, what we are trying to uh, look out for is actually the uh, protein uh, content there. That's Burette's uh, test. So solution D plus sodium hydroxide in drops plus 1% copper sulfate, uh, and then we boil purple or violet coloration observed, and that tells us that D contains uh, protein. Now, if we don't have it this way, we can have it this way, as you can see in this next question. It says, add HNO3 to sample D. That's add uh, nitric acid to sample D, and then add some drops of ammonia, solution so d plus nitric acid plus ammonia solution a violet or orange coloration confirms that protein is present 
So that is just about the set of questions we can have. We could have been testing for carbohydrate, talking about lactose here, but we were not uh, told to make available things like a Benedict solution or a Fellin solution. And that's how I know that we are not going to be testing for this. But talking about the protein, it is something we should look out for. And with that, we have come to the end of salt analysis, talking about NECO 2024. From myself and the entire team, it's bye for now.